figured, well, let it ride. He said, that guy better come up with something better than that or he's going to be missing some talent. So lo and behold, there's a humongous applause as Willie May steps up to the podium and Speedy's there does the right. And Trout is just totally taken by this huge amount of applause. He, and he looked at a young man next to him, Trout not being shy at all. <laughs> he started talking to this young man. He said, now this is amazing. Anywhere that man goes, in this entire country, any ballpark, he always gets all this respect, he gets this tremendous applause. It's just totally amazing. I just, it's, it just, it just overwhelmed me. The young man next to him looked at him and said, yeah, mister, I know what you mean, but I'd just like to know who that guy down there is he's adjusting the microphone for. <laughs>
to remind him where he's been. And this is uh, kind of follows him through. Speedy, you want to come up here for a minute? Where he, where he first started speeding his album. And when he went into the Navy. And uh, as he was an instrument man, uh, beaten on gauges to start with. <laughs> Oh, well, somebody stuck something on it. <laughs> I'll relate to that. <laughs> and then here's an inspector in the safety department. And here's, oh, I forgot to mention, he's also our auxiliary partner. And here he is sleeping on some place out in Mexico, I guess. <laughs> Mexico, that shell. <laughs> This handsome young man over here up on top. <laughs> the reason I got that nickname is um, more or less correlated to him. Is because when he came out and he was on TV and he was on the, the show as cartoons, it seemed like anybody with the last name Gonzalez got that nickname. And it stuck with me ever since. <laughs> and I will tell you one thing, and the reason Trump was right is that um, it seems like everybody in Shell Oil, if you go over there and you ask for Raul Gonzalez, everybody would look at you with a blank expression. They would look at you with a blank expression and say, who's that? <laughs> but if you tell them Speedy Gonzalez, oh, oh yeah, I know who he is. <laughs> Like he said, I grew up in Pittsburgh, and then when I got old enough, actually, I went to Mexico City to study. But some Army sergeant came and knocked on my folks' door and said, where is your son? <laughs> and he told them that they needed my services, so the next thing I know is I'm back here in the States, and I joined the Navy. I spent four years there, and... Uh, Luckily for Mr. Truman, or thanked for Mr. Truman, I signed up for three years and I ended up with four years. <laughs> when I got out, I decided I wanted to go to college. So I went to DVC. And I came to show really, just for a summer job. Long <laughs> <laughs> <Some> summer. <laughs> but after working here for a while, and I enjoyed the job, I decided to stay here longer than just uh, the one summer. And I've been at Gel Oil now for 33 years. And I feel it's time, even though I have to apologize to you people, because they tell me, really, this is Trump's retirement. <laughs> because uh, I decided to help the company for about a month or two couple of months longer. But, <laughs> but I am retiring very shortly. Carol. <laughs> and I have been in uh, a lot of departments, like Vic said. I've been uh, in the health and safety department. I'm still involved with the fire auxiliary crew. And I do go to Reno at times for schooling through the fires with the auxiliary crew. And this last item over here, the reason it's that to me is because, like I say, I decided to help Shell Oil for a little uh, time there because I'm grateful for working there. I'm grateful for the people that I've worked with, and I am also happy to be where I'm at because of them, so I decided to give them just a little bit more of my time, but I am going to retire. <laughs>
said it all. I've got a lot of respect for this gentleman right here. And uh, I've been in an instrument shop uh, coming as a trainee. And uh, he showed me a lot. And uh, a lot of good hiding places. <laughs> 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 and that's amazing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
not right to court it. And uh, they thought I might come up with something for you. I appreciate it. This is uh, a very pretty thing. Is that what they all need you? It's a bunch of pressure reporters. And uh, the fact is, it was a seven, seven day going to fly in there. And uh, with the uh, number of years that Speedy. Uh, has got with the company, he should be able to read that one. Uh, and what this is, is a, like you say, is a recorder. And they keep these in the company so that they have a record of each day. This could be a, a seven day. There's a seven day winding clock on it, or there could be a, a 24 hour. This is a seven day, and they keep record of maybe how much pressure there is in the gas, the flow of the gas, or something like this. And uh, uh, there's quite a few of them around the side there. And, and <laughs> I've worked on these many, many times. And I guess these people just don't want me to forget shells. You got that off the BS to ride low. A nice rock or a can go out there and wind it up once a week. And it's out the but uh, I tell you, that did bring up a lot of uh, different uh, conversations. <laughs> thoughts about that thing while it was being put back together. And, uh, and as far as the colors and thinking bright colors, you know, that, that would go. And uh, uh, put the plate, uh, chrome plating on it and whatnot. And uh, they, they thought they'd put a little chrome around the, around the red gear. You think like a hubcap and might get a place in the garage. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and, uh, speedy, I you know, uh, ask you a question. Well, <laughs> uh, you gave me this. I think I'm going to install it in my house so I can see the flow of gasoline the uh, fuel oil going through there. Do so I get the tools to go with it so I can work on it? <laughs> 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 I'm 
retiring? He retired. <laughs> uh, he's been retired since 1968. Oh, wow. Next to him, I have my brother-in-law, Ron Stroop.
sure as heck he helped me out. He, he was amazing the amount of information that man had. I'd go in to see him for an hour. I'd walk out in one hand. I'd have Farnelli's Trout's High Speed Christian Christ course in one hand. <laughs> Recipes for Kate and Blackbird and the other. <laughs> it consisted of two blackbirds, water in a pot with vinegar, a board and a rock on top, until the board is tender. <laughs> the man was a wealth of information. <laughs> <laughs> i got to admit, though, truthfully, Trout and I got along great. He and I could work on a job for three months. <laughs> We get done, but uh, uh, this time I'd like to ask Vic to come back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to say a few words. <laughs> I'll let us know a chance later. I'll make a comment now, but I might forget it. Vic hopes all the things you said. I'd like to say Clayton, I worked with you a little longer than one year, eight months, and 22 days. <laughs> to introduce Clayton a little bit, his name is Clayton. His wife calls him Vincent. Vince. Okay, Vince. That's you, Vince. Hell of a nice guy. Real nice guy. One of the nicest guys I've met. He's a real friendly, congenial, Agitator. <laughs> Pick on me all the time. Always complains about how short I am. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Clay was born in Louisiana, in New Orleans, a few years ago. I don't want to tell you how long ago. But anyway, he came to work at Shell, actually in... Uh, Shell Point. If people don't know where Shell Point is, it's over in Pittsburgh. Real nice place that we don't own anymore, really. But uh, he stayed there for a while as an operator and a laborer and an operator and a laborer and an operator, right? A few times. Back and down, <laughs> up and down. Until he finally came to Shell Martinez. He came to LOP. After Speedy started LOP, Clayton finally showed up. I showed up. After you shut it down, you decided to cover the Inuit Machado. You worked at the Inuit Machado, I was 69. And together with all of us, so I, you can see I've known him for 20 years. Um, then he became an inspector and decided to go to Houston. And Houston couldn't help him at all. After <laughs> six months, he come back. And now he's retired. Or he's retiring, I guess. I don't know what to say about Clayton except he keeps everybody stirred, he keeps everybody talking, keeps everybody laughing. I don't know how Ilya stands him too much. You gotta, you gotta go crazy with him at home now, eight hours a day. Right? <laughs>
stepping on everyone, and that's what got him so mad. shoulder. 
I always had a piece of foreign material in my eye. Long fishing, I have intentions, a uh, little bar. They're Antioch blocks, you know, they're like about 10 feet long. <laughs> you, ever been, you ever been to Texas, you know what a Texas block is. When we were in Texas, I walked to the different places, and it was only like two blocks. When my wife came to Texas, oh, well, anyway, when my wife came to Texas, I told her, well, I have, the bank is only two blocks away. Well, we got about, uh, I guess, maybe a block, and she says, hey, let's go back and get the car. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, let's see, what else we got here? Texas Instrument Man. I never made it as an instrument man. I was a wannabe instrument man. They called me the, the Coca-Cola Instrument Man. Because I had a, a Remarine smile and uh, Charlie Allen hair. That's <laughs> <laughs> one thing missing, I won't be in a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We used to have three wheel scooters. But there's a lot of people that had wrecks and scooters, and I can testify to that. One of them was Dick Richardson. <laughs> but what happened to me, I was a victim of circumstances. We got this plant called a sulfonation plant. Now, this is a secret spot. The guys from sulfonation don't like people going through there. So one day, about 4.28, I was cruising through the sulfonation, but the scooter had a dynamo label on it that says speed limit, limit speed to 15 miles an hour, I think. It will only go 35. <laughs> I went by that label, and I was limiting my speed. And as I was going through the sulfonation, uh -huh. another thing about when you get old, you go deaf. <laughs> right. Anyway, as I was going through the sulfonation plant, I got hit with a heat sinking missile. Get <laughs> <laughs> the stories you hear about getting a wreck. <laughs> Refinery. 
the auto mechanics would have to come to him. The instrument men came to him. The carpenters came to him. Everybody came to him. So needless to say, he became known as Supermanual. <laughs> Guys in the room. <laughs> you know, everything is micro miniature. That guy, you know, the little guy with the 
beady brown eyes who was up here. He used to have a box, see? And he would bring his little two-foot box in and stand in here, and he'd stand on top of the box. We couldn't see him. And now he's hiring all these little guys. See? He really like you see Rapus? He's looking down on Rapus. You know, I always thought he was dumb, but he was smart. was our Honorable Mr. Al Robbins who puts on these things, and I know from trying to help him, all I did really was got in his way, but anyway, he encouraged me, and it takes a hell of a lot of work to do it, and I know another thing, it involves the family, because I've been at home on what they call duty for the company, and it just upsets a whole death gum routine, and I know that Miss Pat, I call her Miss Pat because I've known her a long time, Miss Pat, if she wants to stand up, I know that she has to help Al out because Al couldn't do it by himself. <laughs> the guy that was handing out the little uh, pins, uh-oh. Anyway, the little pins is their son, David. And I, I know, I've known David ever since he was, shooting since he was big as Rimmerini. <laughs>
that other than Vic Rimmerini, <laughs> and other than Van Ducci, there's a supernatural force that's pushing this guy around. <laughs>
nearly carried it. Somebody stepped on it. Well, just to show you how long I can carry a grudge. <laughs> Uh, I saved that candy cane to retaliate. <laughs> How you got something to say? I got something to say. What? Oh, God. Well, that candy cane place. Shell oil did not buy that. Oh, it's freaking candy cane. <laughs> Betty Billington got that can you, candy you, Can I authorize you talking like that to me on my return? <laughs> saved it. I put it on a wall in my office and it's hung there since 83. And what about, what about the, uh, what about now the listen gingerbread you. man I gave you? That Jeff, Jess, Jess, the he's man. sleeping. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> anyway, so I put the candy hung up on the wall and said, I'm going to save that second just to remember whenever I retire. And that's why I had to retire early because the, the cat, the mice were going to do that. <laughs> anyway, so I hung it up there. And about a month goes by, there's another candy cane on my desk. And I said, oh, maybe Bailey Betty's apologizing. <laughs> so I, you know, went, ate the thing. And about a month later, there's another candy cane on my desk. <laughs> and I was sort of thinking, well, that dumb Betty, she's got a crush on me. <laughs>
several items. Because before you can be a full-fledged instrument man, you have to pass the test. Uh, they don't just make an instrument man out of everybody. Believe it or not, you look at instrument people, you look around you, and they don't look like it. But these guys are intelligent. <laughs>
and Speedy's problem, he kissed the wrong end. <laughs>
the foreman would come around for overtime. Speedy, you want to work overtime? Uh, uh, <laughs> I gotta go call the chick. <laughs>